when I ask my students, all six years old to fourteen year old, okay, they're from very remote villages. They hardly go to school. They just uh, do whatever all day. When I ask them what they want to do in future, all of them say, "If we want to become police, or we want to join the army." Why? Because they want to fight the bad guys. And where did this come from? Because all the movies show there is the singam, there is there is some army officer, there is a police officer. That's that's not bad, but there's there's an imbalance. Hello and good morning. Every voice matters, especially when it comes to the issues that shape the future of our youth. Join us for a thought-provoking discussion and an empowering conversation with. Kalash Bhaiya today. Hi Kalash, welcome to my channel Say Something with Mads. I am Madhumita, a youth mentor and a UNSDG ambassador and I'm so happy to welcome Kalash on my channel today. How are you feeling Kalash today? I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you for calling me and I'm I'm doing great. I just started my day with a nice breakfast. So yeah. Doing great, great, great. How's the weather like in Jalgaon? Jalgaon has pretty normal weather, but it's like more on the hotter side always. Oh, yeah. So we go like very hot summers, but we don't have very uh, cold winters. And that's yeah. cool for me. Like. All right. So let's dive deep into knowing who Kalash is, but I will just give a short intro. I'm not even going to introduce her. I'm just going to tell her that how... Um, I met her because she is an Ashoka change maker, Ashoka Awardee. Uh, they they choose youth. Um, 2022 youth change makers list had her on it, and I connected through the uh, through that uh, list. I went through that, and I saw that she is one person whom I must bring on my channel because she has so much to speak, so much substance. I think one interview will fall short. She is her has her own NGO. She is a STEM enthusiast. She has gone on scholarships to study abroad and whatnot. Her plate is full. And moreover, she is just about to prepare, give her 12 standard exams. She has taken time out to be on my channel. So I'm really, really happy and really grateful. So Kalash, what does your beautiful name mean? And introduce yourself in your own words. My name Kalash is usually a guy's name and Kalash yes. literally means the pot that we keep in front of gods for when we do worship, puja, whatever. And Bhaiya, you know Bhaiya has a very interesting meaning, right? Bhaiya is... Yeah, yeah. So brother. What, how did you <laughs> Nothing this else. unique name? How did you deal with this unique name? First of all, when people don't see your picture, they'll know you are a guy. And then with the Bhaiya, yeah. again it is... Yeah. How, how did stereotype, what did you face? No, all my life, whenever newspapers uh, mentioned my name, okay, so beginning of my life when I was six, six, seven years old, it was always like drawing competition, my college Bhaiya first and like something, something around drawing, dance, singing, something around that. And it was never college Bhaiya. It was Kailash Pankaj Bhatia. So okay. it was not me. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. so so I had to take it to my principal to show, okay, okay this is me actually. This is not someone else. Uh, oh. So yeah, so my name had completely very cool stories because I used to make fun of myself for my name so that others don't. And it's like, yeah, it's very fun. I, I roast my name the best. Okay, so now talk about yourself, your journey, who is a family member, you, your, uh, what are your hobbies and what have you done? A little bit in short. Okay, so in short, I wanted to do everything. I tried to do everything. So when I was four years old, I I started playing the harmonium. Do you know the harmonium? Yes, yes. The instrument. And yes. then, then I started playing tabla at five, then started doing classical singing, then uh, drawing, painting competitions, and um, skating, badminton, swimming. Because I was, I'm the eldest child, so I, I have a sibling. And it was always like, this. she's going to try everything uh, so that she figures out what she likes the best. Um, okay. And I ended up liking math the best. So okay. you can understand. Like, I had so many options. And what did I pick? Math. 
first let's start yeah. about why you are on uh, the ashoka change makers list and why you are here basically is about your um, ngo talk about fun learning youth how it started during the pandemic and have seen your videos they are amazing so many young people have joined you to teach uh, youngsters so how is the movement going and where is it now and uh, tell us how it all started so um in, during the pandemic i returned from my study abroad program and uh, i saw there that there was this students in their high school were very willing to actually do and uh, do something uh, impactful in the society and change the society and we usually in india what we do is we change we wait until we graduate and then we start yeah, to earn then yeah. we become capable of giving back to society no we can give to society like any time um even in high schools so i figured that out in singapore i led like a food drive there uh, and then all that experience i took that experience and tried to solve one problem in india that was the biggest problem that i saw here was uh, children my age that time there was like 14 year old children dropping out of school without completing it and they had such less grade level competencies and they couldn't solve uh, basic arithmetic problems they couldn't recite alphabets so um, my housemate's daughter pooja she's also my age and we used to hang out together all the time before i went to singapore and i came back and i i was just catching up with her and she told me that she stopped uh, going to school okay. i was like okay pandemic this is pandemic it's okay but she told me that she's not even doing online education and okay. she has come she has started working in others houses so i realized this is a whole connected problems of child labor plus she was going to get married at 18 oh. it was all all decided so it, it could have led to like child marriage in some parts or dropouts was the biggest problem so i was like okay so this is something i can solve and i will solve so i tried giving them devices that online education you should start online education at least but then that didn't work very well because devices their parents took it or they devices could be misused you know then i start tried to uh, just keep my books open because i had like 2000 books in my house so i tried to open that that you should you can come in any time and you can take this take this book and you can read it but then i realized that you can't read english is an issue I, yeah yeah english has, i even had marathi and hindi books but okay. she can't even she couldn't even read that very very well so then i started teaching her in my backyard and teaching her and her brother and then they told me that um, our friends are also interested they also want to join so i was teaching like 20 students in my backyard and uh, oh that's amazing that's how it started and, okay yeah that's how it started and i i was like okay there is potential and i'm going to just scale it how how did this word of mouth how did it spread and how so many people of youngsters joined and throughout the pandemic you started uh, you continued teaching and what is the status of this ngo now okay so i uh, we started during the pandemic almost like 2020 august okay. and uh, at that time it was just us jalgaon two three two three places in jalgaon so 20 people from my area then 20 people from their area and something like that with word of mouth i mean no. obviously mom's facebook mom's facebook is just filled of people who want to help so yeah <laughs> so posting true. it on mom's facebook was was a good idea and then when it started taking substance there was like two three clubs open then i uh, opened a website and like properly made like a non profit out of it and okay. posted it posted it on linkedin and yes linkedin helped me a lot almost all the volunteers came from linkedin and then there was a lot of uh, newspaper um coverage so okay. in rajasthan there was a newspaper coverage regarding this so i got calls from like rural rajasthan teachers and government teachers and people like that who uh, who wanted to help me and that's why we started clubs in their uh, in their villages so we have three clubs in rajasthan right now and um, some in maharashtra yeah. and in gujarat then uttarakhand 
And today what we're doing is um, we've shifted this goal of, so what we are trying to do is to just create interest within students so that they go back to schools. We were not educating them and we were not uh, like completely giving them all the education that they need to. and education just, kind, huh? just yeah. to make the subject fun. Like, okay, teach, learning can be fun. Uh, so just creating interest, that was our goal. But then I realized that as as time went on, as I got Ashoka Young Changemakers, and um, as I talked to people from there and realized that, okay, this is how other nonprofits work. I got collaborations from there. And then finally, I uh, I like through modification, I arrived at this conclusion right now that uh, why this whole process worked was because it was cohort based mentorship. So we were basically mentoring students. There's it's it's proven that if you have at least one good relationship with um, an adult in your school, yes. So. Um, at least one good relationship, then uh, their students are more likely to go to school. And we wanted to be that relationship. And that's why we uh, use this connecting with students and maintaining students cohort based. Wow. Amazing. Like what you have started, like everyone, uh, we can do this little thing of teaching two, three people within their building, but you could never imagine at what scale this would go. And that was the need of the hour during the pandemic. People were looking at things like this offline, how, how to engage. With it. Yeah. So look at how that small effort became uh, became so big. And it's not with an intention that I want to become big, you started. I wanted to help. So that's how it is. So genuinely, uh, those who, my, my young listeners and those who are uh, going to listen to this podcast, connect with her. Uh, for her uh, cohort, you can take it anywhere you are, in any part of India, abroad, wherever you see people, youth, young children are not into education, get them back to school is the UN SDG goal also we need a literacy and children back in school so just connect with her I will share her link and I'm sure this will inspire many people thank you for sharing this I'm open. feel free to connect with me I'm always yes, open to conversation yes. I am going to connect with you too regarding this what can I do about it it's really great okay now coming to another of uh, a part of Kalash which I am very interested in because I was never good in maths and I dreaded the subject and she is a maths enthusiast. So uh, women in STEM is actually uh, numbers are very, very low and people, even if they are good, sometimes drop out uh, later in life and do not continue career in STEM. So what would you say about this trend of men versus boys versus girls in STEM and do you see a change and why do you think boys do better than the girls if do you have any theory in this so let's hear it from her maths genius and to tell you this is the right time to tell she is also got an award um, which is called a maximum academic medal at a young age so uh, she has some award for holding medals can you imagine she has worked she is a record holder of medals so let's hear it from her about this as well as her maths journey and what do you think about women in STEM so definitely there is a problem um in my class of any like good mathematics class uh like any good like engineering JE class yeah. um the gender ratio is one as to nine okay it's devastating. It's devastating. And even in IITs, I don't think the gender ratio is very good. So that's why girls quota better. is... Is it getting better right. or there's no change? No, I think it is It is definitely getting better uh, at some part. But um, but yeah, we, need, we have a long way to go to actually reach to a level where uh, we are not limiting someone's potential. So I, I feel like uh, the society, the societal structure has made it in a way that um, people, some people are uh, refrained from doing some things and other people are not. That also applies to like your yeah. family background, for example. Yeah. If your family is not business family, uh, your parents will like restrict you and not let you do business, something like that. Or if your fa if your family is all doctors, they'll not let you do art or something. That's also a restriction of potential. 
and that's exactly same what is happening to girls and boys uh, that uh, historically there was this divide patriarchal divide and that and that just and stayed girls will, and girls will do bio and girls will become better doctors yeah. and the boys will become better, better engineers come what may things are still the same even now when i ask my students all 6 year old to 14 year old okay they are from very remote villages and they're just there to study and they they hardly go to school they just uh, do whatever all day when i ask them what they want to do in future all of them say we want to be we want to become police or we want to join the army why because they want to fight the bad guys and where did this come from because all the movies so there is the singam there is yeah uh, uh there is some army true. officer there is a police officer that's that's not bad but there's there's an imbalance there's and definitely so an imbalance can be created so much impact if you have yes. somebody yeah character okay kalash yes. coming to my next question about your various achievements i also want to ask you and let the viewers know about this is that you have gone abroad to study to singapore yeah. when you were in grade 9 and you were supposed to continue there but you came back because of the pandemic and then you had prepared yourself to go to iit je and enroll uh, the quota uh, then there's a change of mind and you change your line and this is so fascinating take us on how you went to singapore and why did you come of course i know you said it's because of the pandemic and post coming back this youth thing happened your ngo started and there's a change now that you want to not go for the traditional line of engineering even after going there and studying there for a year let us speak about this i think every youth will connect to this let's take you through this journey yeah obviously as a child when uh, we a schools uh, yeah. we were like school toppers and everything when then i was then i was district topper then i was state topper then i was national topper and then um uh, people from quota gave me the scholarship because i was a national topper in their exam uh so they were like uh wow yeah uh, so i i kind of started attending their star batches sometimes so i used to go there for for one month or a couple of months so it was never like just going there but i used to do school year and then in vacations i go to quota you started so there was grade eight you said right yeah Starting grade eight, I was I was moving. Yeah, even in seventh actually, I first time I went to Kota in sixth grade. Uh, What went again? Seventh grade, yeah. <laughs> And okay. in eighth grade, it was more like uh more frequent. Okay. Uh, and the ninth grade was very frequent. And then uh yeah, managing schools with Kota, there was like no other no life. There was just academics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh and then yeah but i liked it i used to enjoy that but obviously there was a lot of stress but then i found an opportunity to go abroad and i okay so i had this um very much fascination with exams and that's why all these medals because i just liked giving exams wow so okay uh <laughs> so in in these exam exam thing i was uh, i um i just gave an exam and i did not know that this exam took me to singapore wow <laughs> yeah so until the final stage final stage was uh, an interview in singapore in embassy in delhi so uh, until i went there i really i realized when i went there that okay this is how we go abroad if if i get uh, if i got selected in this stage i will go abroad and i was uh, grateful if i was lucky enough to get selected uh, and so i shifted to singapore in 9th grade yeah and then okay so then, then a lot of things changed because all these aca- aca- academic focus uh, just shifted to um you, you know i did leadership there i did debate and participated in various activities i um, um i was more independent more uh, yeah Yeah. yeah there was a lot of freedom there so i uh 
yeah so so there was this academic pressure and then freedom there was this two completely opposite things when i came back i was i i just had this one resolution that i am not going back to jd because i knew that uh, i could do computer science even if i wanted to do computer science i would do it without jd without going through jd and there's no i thought that there was no real like very importance that in my life for jd and uh, not for jd but the cost is value it lost its importance to see what the world can what can you do without this yeah yeah and people judge you with that with that only one metric but only one rank that's not mm. how your whole personality that's the rank is not your whole personality obviously and that's why i, I was like okay i'm not doing this <laughs> but still it took time to convince my parents that i'm not doing this and i have a better option uh so i continued doing je for two years um and then i dropped it in like 11th or 12th grade when i finally convinced my parents that okay i have a better option and this is not the safe option that i should continue there are other options and i i have better discovered myself to follow the other Sorry. options when i was yeah. listening to you i can feel that from inside when you are talking how much it mattered that your parents were convinced because of course they are looking from a different perspective a different gla- glass where they come from their background what they your child is a topper throughout and their automatic transgression uh, is that okay iit yeah. so now when you know that they they are only thinking for your best and then you have the doubt in yourself that if they are thinking for the best i am thinking for the best yes. what is this yes <laughs> i can understand yeah i have seen many of this case uh, kalash and uh, being a teacher for so many years and being around uh, my son is 23 years i shared with you his story there are many stories like that but once you are a topper your your expectations are somewhere else like you cannot say no to iit you are average you can still fight out with your parents that i am not meant for it let me convince them but if you are a topper it's taken it's like okay gospel exactly. bible that you have to go there not just school topper it's it's like i was in the star batch in kota so that yeah. made it like 100 times worse absolutely absolutely <laughs> i hope people who are listening can understand what she went through her whole perspective changed because she went abroad for studying yeah. that doesn't mean that you have to go abroad to get your eyes open but if you think that that's creating pressure and that's not for you the time is right don't waste those four years of your life doing what you are not going to enjoy and not going to even use in your life later on exactly. so many of us fall into that trap so through you this could be one message yeah right. okay yeah, let me just make it clear i'm not against je or not yes. against iit it yeah. is it is very good my brother is doing that it's like it's very chill and i'm very closely related to all my best friends are doing iit because all my best friends are from the batch that i used to study and uh, so, so it's like they're very good and doors. they're probably yeah. very good but it depends on personal fit if you want Got to it. if you want to do it you will do it all right now let's move to a very uh, interesting topic i would ask you is you are from jalgaon for those who are listening they are jalgaon is a small town in maharashtra um, and now of course it's a growing city um, but coming from there you are whole education was there schooling was there how do you compare yourself with a youth from a city from a metro and you went abroad also to see that do you think there is something which was lacking in you or do you think there was an advantage with the other cities don't have other metro cities don't have well, how would you say how is your mental makeup do you feel it's a problem to adjust maybe it's a kind of how you dress how you speak how what is your uh, thought process maybe it's it's something good like i don't want i don't know i want to hear it from you and i will share my story after that okay yeah go ahead in jalgaon i was in this school which was almost run by rss principals so i uh, oh, okay i have been in the uh, like uh, the gathering topic 
लाईक स्वातंत्र्य वीर सावरकर अँड लाईक एक्स्ट्रीमिस्ट या इट वॉज व्हेरी एक्स्ट्रीमिस्ट अँड आय नो लाईक फाईव्ह हंड्रेड प्रेयर्स नाव बाय हार्ट बिकॉज आय वॉज इन दॅट स्कूल अँड दॅट्स वाय आय स्टार्टेड प्लेइंग हार्मोनियम ॲट दॅट यंग एज बिकॉज आय वॉज इन दॅट स्कूल अँड so so the, there was a sudden like very big change in everything uh something that helped me was my family was always supportive and always like the progressive family that's why uh when all my friends couldn't wear shorts outside i was very free to do whatever i wanted this is just an example um in 7th grade uh, our school did not let girls play football because it was apparently not girls sport Yeah. So we made a football team obviously and we competed <laughs> district level for that and at that time a lot of uh, a lot of my friends were wearing shorts football shorts for the first time in their life yeah correct and this was this this is basically the condition in jalgaon right now uh, this is not condition for every school or anything but yeah the general consensus would be like this uh, that jalgaon is not very developed but it's Uh, but it has a lot of opportunities because it's like a small town so you can do pretty much whatever you want to because everybody knows everybody so um so, so that gives I'm, an I'm, advantage I'm, I'm, your your thinking your opening of your horizon do you think people at the bigger cities have more advantage or because of the internet everything is available to everyone it's how you use it uh no honestly every everything is available to everyone but Uh, when it comes to the background you have and the uh-huh. nour- nourishing you've already had internet comes in in the later stage of life right after you are a child after you become an adult then internet comes in adolescence um but then before that uh, when you think about it all the uh, all the n- shaping of your brain has already happened and uh, sometimes it's not really very good so there could be like uh, more Orthodox. people with extreme ideologies and yeah there could be orthodox ideologies and um yeah people are restricted a lot i think they restrict themselves there will be stereotypes there will be biases and stereotypes yeah. which you have to break as a as a girl from it's much more difficult yes i can understand it's been a fascinating conversation like from uh, knowing you and going you going from here to a big city to study to singapore and now you're preparing to go to us people from anywhere can do anything but there is a struggle from a smaller cities who come with a lot of other things as you said may not be your academics but the whole thought process shifting of the mental uh, makeup is different right if you have a supportive yeah if for me to go to anywhere like kota mumbai singapore who will send their 14 year old daughter to singapore alone correct correct um kalash coming to uh, another topic uh, i think we have uh, covered a lot but i want to just ask you about this what for my youth who are listening and you went on to, to oxford to study uh, for a, a, under a scholarship for a few days the warp w a r p so i think they do it every day every year and i just want you to take take us through that what is so, warp um so basically if you're interested in mathematics and computer science and you want to in- integrate it with philosophy psychology and rationality this is okay. the camp for you so the full form of this camp is winter applied rationality program so it's applied rationality uh so it has like mathematical perspectives to abstract things also so it's basically like a confluence of everything but you, you it would be better if you have like a mathematical analytical brain for this understanding yes. it was a 10 days camp in oxford this year um it it is in the us it's also 10 days i think um so yeah they they are conducting this year in the us and the applications have closed and they have an exam they have an exam to give no they don't have an exam uh, you just have to fill an application form there are personal questions and there are mathematical questions there are one or two mathematical questions okay. then there's an interview which decides that and it's like a full scholarship program so uh, including travels now coming to the next section which is I get to know you better this was your work yes through your work we get to know you but now i want to ask you what do you think is kalash's main 
biggest strength and biggest limitation which you want to overcome so both of them would be related to people okay uh, firstly i can i think i can uh, converse with people very well and okay. uh, i can listen to people very well i think i uh, i can speak and listen sometimes i'm just speaking and i go on speaking but then sometimes i'm like a good listener if this there's, there's like a chance for me to listen i kind of understand what the people is uh, what a person in front of me is thinking or how they are processing you, their emotions you are emotions intuitive of... about what goes on in the people's mind yeah okay. exactly i think that's that's a strength the weakness would be that i i sometimes get very flown away by it that uh, if someone is feeling bad is feeling sad in front of me i will also feel sad and okay. i will try to cheer them up or something like that and then all of that combined mood will go down or i I'll, mm. i'll just care too much about people if if someone is not responding or something like that i'll care too much about that and probably doubt what i did wrong oh so, yes this could be this could be a limitation and this could be self doubt yeah, okay uh, kalash there's a next question which you will find very interesting if you have to write a book on yourself what would be the title of that book oh my god um something around the lines of doing everything so okay there, there's this phrase called jack of all trades master of none right yeah but in this world you can't be jack and master there has to be something in the middle so that there's like mid of all trades <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah correct it it actually makes sense like do everything may not be perfect but don't give yeah. up because you don't want you don't know that that whether you'll be good yeah, or no, not it's good to prioritize on onto one thing but but for me it's like both things entrepreneurship and mathematics so uh, that's kind of what i'm trying to convey right think about it if you have three things which you can carry just three things i'm not talking about people everything else is taken from you say yeah. that suppose yeah. there's a, a natural disaster you have to move out of your country or a city and only three things you can carry what would those three things be laptop most certainly okay obviously food because i'm a little rational that okay i can't carry live without food okay food water yeah yeah like food and water yeah no I, i'm just thinking of if i was left in in a, in a jungle alone what uh then okay. i would okay. yeah then I, i would at least need like food or something because or i can yeah. take a food take food from the trees or something but then i need my laptop to do anything all right next question coming up to you you <laughs> have three people you can take anywhere from the world living today for dinner mm. who would those three people be who would you want to be on the table elon musk is very mainstream but yeah i i like to take elon, elon musk because somebody is always on the list of this question of all yeah, yeah right please, please. no because i really want to know if if all of this is just marketing gimmick or he's really or planning he's to be really something. that good yeah 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 okay <laughs> and my mother i i definitely take my mother oh wow any... so sweet of you all right third yeah someone from like a really mathematical industry Uh, a math professor okay. like Mujul Bhargava or someone like that. Good choice, yeah. Very thoughtful choice, I must say. Now coming to another uh, segment where the roles are reversed, Kalash, you get to ask me a question, and let's see what would that be. Okay, I'm really curious about your journey. Uh, as uh, you told me, you've been doing a lot of things, right, for change making and uh, for others. I think. i would like to ask you what uh, what have your experiences been, been and what is the biggest learning you've taken from it to working okay. for others yeah yeah so you know as you said that as you said uh, you yourself started by teaching two children so you know uh, this collection during uh, floods or during uh, natural calamities when you connect with goons or some other organizations that collect people from go door to door collect people uh, collect clothing for them collect um um uh, rations for them grocery for them this has always been there like we have been doing this for a long time so it comes across very naturally i don't think there is a big picture in the mind but the learning is the there is no end to it 
keep on doing a little bit each one from every household uh, everyone can give at least one hour a week two hour a week whatever you can just do it like there is no oh, how do i start doing this social work it's a big thing big commitment so it's like okay just go ahead and do your bit maybe it's just a small step so coming to my next part is you said you read a lot of books so let's ask you this is a section where all my viewers look up to is what's a book which has inspired you if there's any movie which has inspired you any series which you watch any podcast anything which you want to share with our listeners who can also go ahead and check and will help them yeah so this is the book that i'm reading right now i have read like i'm not reading right now i have read it uh, like two months back and because i have been doing all the physics and chemistry books only so apart from that if if we talk out of academics if this has only been the, uh, the one book that i read it's called doing good better by william mackaskin mm-hmm. and it um it basically tells us about how how to uh, create better impact so okay. how to improve lives better so improving lives could be extending someone's life someone's life or improving their productivity so if if this is your graph they could increase their life or increase your productivity so this area and this area um, okay is the it. impact right you don't save someone lives you just extend it right anyone okay. uh, so right interesting something okay A- any other any other suggestions do you follow anybody any podcasts any movies which is your favorite movie oh uh, so i watch a lot of uh, animated movie Okay, I really like good. Big Hero there, and I also watch South Indian movies because they don't make sense, and I love it when movies don't make sense. Obviously, uh, uh, yeah. So basically, these two and Chichore, everyone's all-time favorite. Yeah, actually, true. Yeah, yes. Now coming to that section where we will end it with a song from you. Any favorite song? Any line which you want to quote? Uh, anything to end this show. uh i have been doing classical music so uh-huh. i could go in like a little bit more classical song so please all please. the young people who are watching me out there i am not i am not a boomer please i am just like you i just have been trained differently i'm sorry guys so there's this song by lata mangeshkar called oh. uh, it's o palan hare have you heard of it yes 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 lagan okay continue we are here ओ पालन हारे निर्गुण और न्यारे तुमरे बिन हमरा कौन नाहे हमरी उलझन सुलझाओ भगवन तुमरे बिन हमरा कौन नाहे तुमरे बिन हमरा Oh, no, no, no. Very nice, beautiful, beautiful. This is an amazing song. <laughs> Nobody would choose this, and it shows that you are trained. So, thank you once again, Kalash, for joining today. I hope you had as much fun as I had interviewing you. Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you so much for doing this. It, this has absolutely been so great, and I, I, I love knowing about you too. And I didn't know, like anyone from Bhusawal. I'll call you. I call you from the saval only. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so, um, actually, it's great that these conversations never feel like convers uh, a talk show conversation. It feels like I'm getting to know a young person. She is getting. It's because me. of you. You have such great skills of conversation that makes all of this possible. I'm so happy to hear that. That's what I want. Thank you so much. So, for all our viewers, those who are listening, and um uh, i'm requesting more and more people to listen to this channel and subscribe and comment on this young change maker their life their journey is sure to inspire you so keep watching and before ending as i say every day do a little bit about your planet a little one small step will make this planet a better place don't think do it Thank you so much Kalash and hope to see you again all of you bye bye and see you next